You work in a big tech company and you've decided that it's time for you to leave and move on to the next big thing. This is a huge transition for you, your colleagues, your boss, and the company. Now, the big tech companies typically have a process to find for leaving the company and having your last day. But you still have to be very careful how you approach things. It's easier for you to do things in a way that cause you problems long after you're gone. Hi, I'm John L. Miller, the Deliberate Engineer. I've had 15 different positions at a variety of big high-tech companies such as Microsoft, Google, Amazon, and so on. As I transitioned between each of those positions, I had to figure out if it was time to leave and when it was, I had to navigate the departure process in a way that tried to leave a minimum of ruffled feathers and prevent any bad feelings or any problems in the future. I have a few cautionary tales about this that I want to share with you and also to provide you kind of a checklist of what you should do when you're thinking about quitting to actually depart the company in a way that doesn't cause any problems. Earlier I made a video about how to decide if it's time to leave your current job. For the purpose of this video, let's assume that you've decided it's time to go, uh, you've found a new job, and now you're really just trying to figure out the best way to depart and make the process as smooth as possible. First and foremost, realize that leaving your job is very much a private process. It's in your best interest to keep things to yourself, not to share it with anybody. Don't give hints, don't tell your manager or your colleagues or anybody else at work until you've got everything absolutely ironed down, you have a signed offer in your hands, and so on. The consequences for prematurely letting people know that you're leaving can be significant. It's in your best interest to keep things quiet. I'll explain a little bit about that as we go along in this video. So what happens when you let the company know that you're leaving? In the very worst case, you wind up getting fired on the spot or put on something called garden leave, where you're expected to go home and just take it easy. You're not fired, you're still pulling in a paycheck, but you're also not allowed to work or log in or contact people at work. Another very common side effect of letting people know that you're leaving the company is that any rewards or any good things that had been earmarked for you, even if they'd been allocated to you, suddenly find their way to being allocated for somebody else. Usually, uh, this is a side effect of the fact there's not enough of rewards to go around to all the good performers in the company. So the way the manager looks at it is, well, I've got somebody who's leaving who's going on to different things anyways. Why not reward the people who are sticking around and who that reward will motivate to do a better job for my team? Finally, in purely practical terms, if people know that you're leaving, it can become much harder to get your job done. Among other things, if you're having to work with people in other groups, if you're having to work with people in your own group, Getting them to do the things that you need done so that you can make progress becomes a lower priority for them. After all, from their perspective, you're leaving. Does it really matter if you get this thing done? Will you be around long enough to get it done? Why should they prioritize your work instead of their work when it's not going to do them any good in the future? Let me give you two examples of actual cases that happened when people were departing work. A very strong researcher was getting ready to leave the company that I was at to head on to something new. Uh, historically, they had been a very strong performer at the company, delivering both good research results and good value to the bottom line of the company. Overall, you'd think the company would have a, a vested interest or at least some gratitude in keeping them happy. But the fact is, when they gave their notice, a security person was called immediately to bring them to their office. They had one hour to collect their belongings, and then they were escorted out of the building and put on garden leave. They did not get to come back in. They couldn't log into email to say goodbye. Nothing like that. This isn't necessarily a productive way for a company to let somebody go, uh, and there were hard feelings all the way around. The second case is a development lead who decided to leave a company. He knew that it was going to be difficult to replace him, so he talked to his manager and arranged to stick around for a few months to help transition a new dev lead into place. The manager knew it was going to be difficult to replace the developer, so they asked the developer if they would be interested in a counteroffer from the company. The developer said, sure, why not? And the manager went to HR. When HR got involved, they did try and put together a counteroffer, but they also took a look at everything having to do with that employee's departure. Originally, the employee was uh, scheduled to depart in mid-September. It was early June when this happened. Uh, HR changed that so that the employee's last day had to be at least one day before the end of the June. The reason for this is elementary and it has to do with money. Every year at this company, employees get a bonus that can be up to 30% for their efforts uh, over the fiscal year, which ran from July to June. If an employee left before the end of the fiscal year, 
they would not be eligible for any bonus. So this developer, who had been expecting a 15 to 30 percent bonus, instead wound up getting nothing, even though they had sort of stayed a little extra and gone the extra mile to try and help the company out. These stories underscore truth about companies. You work with people in the company, but they're also employees of the company. This means that even though they may be nice, they may be your friends outside of work, they also have obligations and duties they have to follow for the company. If you're putting them in a position where they have to pick between their loyalty to you or their loyalty to the company, first of all, that's not fair to do to them. Second of all, it's only reasonable to expect that they would watch out for the company because they're going to be around to deal with the consequences of whatever they do. This is why I recommend not letting anybody know that you're leaving until it's ironclad and you're absolutely ready to depart. That way you're not putting them in a position where they have to choose between doing you harm and doing the company harm. Also, it's worth adding a caution about human resources, HR. The people who work in HR, they're usually people, people, and they're, they're very nice, but they also have an obligation to the company. Their primary role for the company is to protect the company and the company's resources from any sort of liability or harm or risk. What that means is, if they have to pick between being nice to you or looking out for the company's interests, their job is to look out for the company's interests. And that's why that dev lead, for example, wound up losing their bonus, because it was something the company could do with relatively little risk to itself that was good for the company. Sometimes when you're leaving a company, there's a little bit of bad will or animosity. There's often frustrations that boil up, especially as time grows short. And it's very natural to have the urge to share this with the people there, sometimes out of spite, sometimes out of genuinely trying to make things better. I'm here to tell you there's absolutely no upside to sharing any of this information with the job that you're leaving. Out of all the times I've left companies, out of all the times that I've dealt with people who are leaving, I've never seen constructive feedback taken in the way that it was intended and I've never seen it actually make a difference. The usual result is any negative comments, any criticism winds up finding its way to the ears of the person who's been criticized, not actually doing anything to them, but maybe creating some hard feelings. It's a very small world out there. You're likely to work with some of these people again in the future. You don't want to take actions that don't do any good, don't have the, the intended good effect, and at the same time frustrate them and complicate your working relationship with them in the future. Those are the two most important things about leaving a company. First, it's private. Keep everything to yourself until it's absolutely ironclad and you're ready to leave with a moment's notice if that's what it takes. And second, keep everything positive. There's no upside to running around telling people how broken things are or saying how this and that should change or anything like that. After all, if you really cared, you'd stick around and help make things better. Uh, instead, just keep everything positive. Usually it's best to talk about how you're being attracted to the next thing you're working on rather than saying anything about why you're leaving where you're at. Last, I'd like to go ahead and give you a sequence of actions that you should probably take if you're looking at leaving your company. Step one, make the decision to leave. It sounds obvious, but there's actually a lot that goes into deciding whether you're gonna stay or whether you're gonna go. I've got another video about that. I'll leave a pointer to it in the description. Second, find yourself a, a good next job. Again, you should be keeping everything to yourself, but you should make the time to go out and interview. Uh, it takes effort, it takes time, do what you need to to get that next job. I'll have a video that describes more about that later. Third, after you get an offer and accept it, set a tentative start date. You should do this before you communicate with your old job. Set it to sometime between two weeks and six weeks in the future. You can always set it for, for example, six weeks in the future and then pull it in if it turns out you can leave your current job earlier. Fourth, clean up your office. Get everything cleaned up, get your personal stuff brought home, Wipe out anything personal on your hard drive, on your work machines, and the rest of it. Just tidy things up so that if you get an hour to clean out your office, you're in good shape to be able to do it. In some rare cases, you might not even go back to your office uh, after you've given your notice. So you just want it to be easy for your stuff to find its way back to you. Next, it's time to talk to your boss and let them know that you're leaving. As you go, as you talk to them, make sure you keep everything professional and above all, positive. Say how much you've appreciated working there, you've enjoyed the environment, you like the company, but you feel it's time for a new challenge or a, a new team, or you want to learn more stuff in a different domain. Whatever the reason is, come up and share the positive reasons why you're leaving. 
Find out from your boss who they want to pick up your responsibilities and make sure that you make a transition plan so that those people will have pointers to everything that they need and that you talk to them in person at least once before you go. You're not going to get everything wrapped up in a shiny package with a red bow, but you can at least put things in a, a state that it won't be hard for the person who's coming and picking it up. Another thing you should settle with your boss is how you should notify your peers and other people at the company. Some companies are very particular about how you say goodbye and when you say goodbye. Other companies leave it totally up to you. Come up with a, a goodbye email, include contact information for yourself. You can post it someplace where everybody can see. You can send individual messages to the people you want to keep in touch with. Make sure you link to folks on LinkedIn so that you can connect to them easy if the personal email details change. And that's it. In a nutshell, be positive, leave things in a good state, and let everybody know about your departure. Have you ever quit a job before? How did it go? Do you have any interesting stories that you'd like to share? Please leave comments down below. I'd love to hear about it and I'll be happy to chime my two cents in if you want it. Thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate your time and keep pushing forward.